Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and this basics video is going to be talking about the Create Relationship dialog and some of the features that you get there that might be mystifying, but more importantly, why and when you'd want to use these features. So what are we talking about? If you go to Manage Database, I usually use the keyboard shortcut Command-Shift-D, and you get to this screen here, and there's these different operators right here on a relationship. So you get equals does not equal, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, and x. What's x? That's a Cartesian join where everything equals everything. We're going to talk about each of these in this video. So stick around because we're going to cover some interesting cases for Cartesian at the end, and that's maybe one you hadn't thought about much before. So the basic relationship that you have, and we're going to take a look at uh, this example here. So we have a given company record ABC technology, and then this company has related people who work there, notes, addresses, and invoices, different kinds of related data that we have. The basic relationship would be all of the people who have the same ID on their person record as this company, show me all of them in this portal. So if I go to layout mode, I click on my portal, um, and I can see that it's CU for, cu for customer and person. And so we're in CU customer here. So I'll go to my graph and I see CU person and I can double click on the relationship to see exactly what the nature of the relationship is. So, and that's an equals. So ID equals ID customer. So that's one. Another one that we might have is invoices. And if we see this one, this is CU invoice. Um, and that CU invoice, which looks very similar, it's also ID customer to ID customer. And you might have noticed that it actually says sort down here. So this is sorting not at the relationship level, but it's sorting at the portal level. So if I double click the portal, there's a checkbox that says sort records, and this sorts my invoices by a date. So I can sort them in date order by descending. Um, but what if I wanted only a range of invoices. What if I wanted only invoices, um, say, for a given month, or between, or after a certain date or before a certain date? How would I do that? Here's how. You make a field. Um, I think probably the simplest way to do this is to, is to have a global field in my customer table. So I'm going to make a field called G invoice sort. Uh, I need to be in my company table, G, invoice, date, start maybe. And it's going to be a, a date field. And I'll create it. And then the key thing about a global field um, is you need to click on the box for storage and click the box for use global storage. And that means it's, um, that means it's not actually stored record per record. It just has one value for the whole user session. And then I add that field to my layout. I'll just copy this one, go down to the Invoices tab and paste it here, and say something like Show Invoices After. So a little label. Then double click on the field and choose my G Invoice Date Start. Make my label fit a little bit better. And then what I want to do is rather than showing all invoices, I want to be able to put a date in here, like say um, 5-20-2020, and then have only the invoices show that are actually um, in that date. Before I get too much further in this, the, a more efficient way to do this actually would be to use the filtered portal function. But for the purposes of this video, uh, I'm going to do it at the relational level. So we'll go back to the graph, and we're going to modify that relationship from customer to invoice. And we're going to have um, two criteria. So first of all, I only want to see the invoices for this customer. But secondly, I want to see the invoices where the start date has a relationship to the date over here. And by the way, usually I just do this by trial and error. I just grab, I don't like to think about too much of the greater than, less than. It's pretty simple. But an easier way to do it is to just pick one and click Add, then click OK. And then when you go to your, um, 
uh, layout and you go to invoices, it'll either work or it won't work. So if I put in like 4-1, it'll either show you the ones before the date or show you the ones after the date. So for example, I put 4-1 in and clearly this is working the way that I want. All these ones have a date after 4-1. If I go back to my relationship graph and click on this relationship, I'm going to change this to less than, or sorry, to greater than, and then click change. And now my relationship's going to work opposite. So it's going to be um, only the ones before this date are going to show. So if I put 5-1 here, or if I put a date like today, it's going to show all of them because they're all before that date. Um, so the other thing that you can do is you can have two fields uh, on your relationship. So if I, and, and that would look like this. I'll make another field in my table. I'll duplicate this one. I'll call it end. It's also a global field because I just used duplicate. I'll go to my layout and I'll add that second field. And then I'll call this from and to. Then if I put uh, two dates in here, now this won't work yet, but let's say that I put in a date like from 5-1 to 6-1. So these are not between 5-1 and 6-1s because I have to modify my relationship. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the graph and we're going to say invoice start date is before Oops, I meant to click uh, less than that date and end date uh, this way. So now I have um, a range of dates. And like the other one, I don't spend too much time trying to uh, work my noodle about how exactly these are going to work. I usually just do trial and error because it's faster. So it's either going to work exactly the way you want or it's going to be opposite. And because I've been doing this a long time, this works. Um, so if I change this date to say 4-1, it's going to give me more dates. So this is a, that's a really good uh, use of that tool. OK, so next on the list, um, we have not equals. Why would you use not equals? Let's talk about that one. Let's say you have. Um, like we have here, we have a company record and we have all the people who work there. And I was looking at one of these records like Leah. And I want a portal that shows all the people who work at the company that Leah works at. So I would have a portal that looks something like this. So this is a different context, this person. Um, P is my little thing for that. Uh, I always give a prefix to all of my table occurrence groups. In this case, it's just a single letter P. And so this would be a relationship that's a self-joined relationship from person to person. So I'll make a relationship. Uh, by the way, as you've seen in my other tips videos, I just drag two fields, uh, whatever fields, and hit Command-O, Control-O, to open up this, this uh, dialog, because this is much more efficient. And I want to go from customer ID to customer ID in the same person table. Now, this isn't all the way done, but let's get there a bit at a time. And I'll call this relationship P person self. Because this is a self join to show all the other people who work at the same organization. All right, so now when I click on this, I'm going to go back to my layout and I'm going to add a portal. And I'll use that relationship P person self. And I just want to show two fields. I'm just going to show first name and last name. When I go back to browse mode, I'll see a list of all the people. Um, you know what? I'm going to add a, um, a scroll bar on here um, and maybe make this a little bit taller because there's a lot of people who work here. And what I'll see is that Leah is on the list. But I don't want to see her on the list because that's confusing. So here's where something interesting comes in. Back to the graph. Type in P underscore, and it goes right down to that section of the graph. 
I'm going to modify this relationship and I'm going to add a second field, which is the person ID field does not equal. So we're going to stop here for a second. So what this says is, show me all the people who work at this company, except don't show myself. So if the ID is my ID, then don't show me that record. So that's a very, very good use of the not equal to um, operator in a relationship. All right. Now she's not on the list anymore. And so her name just disappeared. It t I saw it very briefly happen. And so if I went to some other company, this would work for any employee that I click. So if I clicked on, say, Bob Appen, he's not on the list. So this is a really good uh, way. OK, so now let's look at, take a look at the last thing. And the last thing is something that I do for a picker. So let's say I have another table in my database um, that's like some sort of a thing where I have a lot of different potential records. So uh, for example, term is one of the records I have. And that would be like for a specific class offering that's offered to people. And I want to say, what term do you want to add um, like to make an invoice? And I want to make an invoice for a specific term or something like that. I'm going to make a new um, tab here called term select. And um, on this one, I'm going to build a portal here in a second. And what I really want to see is just all of the term records that exist in the table. Um, so if I click on the term record, um, I can go to manage layouts here and search for term. So that's what these records are. So winter, spring, fall, etc. And so there's a there's a day of class and a season and a year, and those are the fields that I that I want to show. How do I make a relationship that shows me all of the records that I want to see in that table? Here's how. You go back to the graph. We're going to go back to, now in this case, we're back at customer again. And I'm just going to duplicate any old table occurrence here. I'll just grab this one. Double click it and show the term uh, table. And I'm going to call this one CU term. And I usually I put a little tilde into a relationship when I want to describe it. So I'll call it CU term all. And I'm just going to then um, grab any two fields like I always do. Hit Command O. And now we're going to get to use the new feature. And that's this Cartesian join. Now what's interesting about the Cartesian join is it doesn't really matter what fields you choose. Because since everything equals everything, I can just randomly pick two fields and click Change. And it's just going to work. Um, for convention, though, I think it's a good idea to choose the ID field between the two things, just because it's a little less confusing when you're looking at it. And here's how it will work. Uh, we've seen the method to make a portal, so I'll just grab another one out here. Use CU term all. And say, OK. Um, and then choose the three fields that I wanted to see, which are year, season, and first day of class. Those three fields go on there. And when I click Browse Mode, I should see all of the terms, and I do. If I, if I went to the table for term and I added a new one for, say, winter 2020, and the first day of class is, say, 12, I don't know, that wouldn't be really, yeah, maybe it's just, say, 12, 15 of this year. Um, that, that record will now immediately appear right here, and I see it. So that is how you use this feature, and we've looked at every single checkbox in the relationship um, dialog box in FileMaker. Thanks very much for your time.